Hello, Grade 11s. Before we start with today's lesson, we would like you to answer the following question. Do you think heavier objects fall faster than lighter ones? We are sure you have an answer. Now let us join KK as she takes us through the journey to answer the question. To start with, let's find out what Aristotle had to say about falling objects. I believe that any thinking person can see that heavier objects must fall faster than lighter objects. Just think about it and you will agree with me. Do you think Aristotle was correct? Well, at the time most people did. You see, Aristotle was a much respected philosopher. But in the 16th century, Galileo Galilei thought that Aristotle might actually have been wrong. So he decided to design an experiment to test his theories. Galileo lived near a town called Pisa in Italy. This town has a very famous tower. It is famous because it's leaning to one side. Actually, it's slowly falling over. Legend has it that Galileo dropped balls of different mass from the top of the Tower of Pisa to see if there were differences in how fast they fell. Do you think you could design an experiment similar to Galileo's? Well, I'm going to take two learners to the lab to see if Aaron can help us set up an experiment of our own. As you watch our progress, take note of how we ensure that our test is fair. Hey guys! Hi Aaron! What are you doing up there? Well, you guys wanted to set up an experiment similar to Galileo, didn't you? That's right! <laughs> Come up the stairs, I'll show you the apparatus I've put together. See, I took three balls, all different colours and all different masses. So now we're going to throw them down at the same time. You see, the purpose of this experiment is to see whether the mass of an object affects how fast it falls. So if we release the balls at exactly the same time and then measure the time it takes for the balls to reach the floor, that should answer our question. That sounds right, but that means we'll need some more equipment. Right, we will need a stopwatch and something that will release the balls at the same time. All right, then don't forget pen and paper to write down all the information that you gather. Mm. Okay guys, so while you decide the best way to collect the data, I'm just going to pop into the lab so you can find some more stuff to do the experiment. Ooh. Cool. <laughs> right, to do the experiment, we'll need to record the results and put them in a table. Well, we'll need the mass of the balls and the time it takes the balls to reach the bottom. That's a good idea. Well, here we go. Look at this simple apparatus that we're going to use to release the balls exactly the same time from exactly the same height. The balls are the same shape and size, but the blue ball has a mass of 300 grams. The red ball has a mass of 200 grams and the yellow ball's mass is 100 grams. I think we're all set. Okay, okay. Will you record the times down there? Sure, Aaron. Release the balls on three. One, two, three. Let's look at the experiment one more time. Clearly, this is a fair test. The balls are exactly the same in every way except their mass. The balls are released simultaneously and they all fall from the same height. Now notice again, they all hit the ground at exactly the same time. It took the balls 1,35 seconds to reach the bottom. That's exactly what Galileo found out when he did his famous experiment. He used cannonballs, we used stress balls. But the results would be the same with any other object of the same size and shape. Let's join Kekin and two learners as they visit Aaron in the lab to further investigate this phenomenon. What will happen if the size and shape are different? You know, that's a great question, you know. Let's find out. All right, guys, this is a pretty simple demonstration. I'm going to drop a coin and a piece of cloth from exactly the same height at the same time. See what happens. But wait, isn't it obvious that the piece of cloth will fall slower because it is lighter? That's a very common mistake that many people make, Lerato. Remember, we just proved in our previous experiment that it is not the mass of the object that causes them to fall slower than other objects. Have a closer look at the coin and cloth. Okay, let's see. 
Notice that the size and shape of these objects are very different. Could these differences cause the coin and the cloth to take different times to fall? The cloth has a much larger surface area than the coin. The differences between the coin and the cloth made people wonder what would happen if the same experiment was repeated somewhere where there's no egg. That is why the coin and cloth experiment is famous. It was one of the very first experiments carried out by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin on the moon, but they used a coin and a feather. Also, remember that there is no atmosphere on the moon. No, we can't all go to the moon just to find out what happened during the experiment, eh? But there are ways to recreate those conditions here on Earth. Have a look. In this chip here, there's a piece of cloth and a coin. And this chip actually is a vacuum, which means it does not have any air in it. Now watch what happens when I flip the tube to cause the coin and the cloth to fall. That's amazing, Aaron. But outside, the cloth fell slower than the coin. But inside the tube, the coin and the cloth reached the bottom of the tube at the same time. How is that possible? Well, the air resists the motion of the falling objects. We call this air resistance. The coin cuts through the air more effectively than the cloth because of its size and shape. The coin has a lower air resistance than the cloth and so falls faster. When there is no resistance, for example, on the moon or in a vacuum on Earth, the time taken for objects to fall is not affected by differences in their size, shape or mass. Now let's join Keke as we look at the motion of these particles. Now that we know that objects of the same size and shape dropped from the same height will take the same time to fall, what does this tell us about their motion? Well, I think it means that the change in position or displacement of both the objects will be the same in the same time. Right, Neo. Remember that the change in position in a time interval is the velocity of the object. So we can say that the average velocity of these falling objects is the same. But is the velocity constant or is it changing? Can't you answer that question by doing a ticker tape experiment? Sure, Dino. I've actually set up an experiment outside. Let's go find out. Sure. First, we thread the tape through the ticker timer, then attach the mass piece to the tape. When the ticker timer is turned on, this little hammer strikes the carbon foil every 0,02 seconds. This makes a tiny mark on the tape, so the time between two adjacent dots is exactly 0,02 seconds. Now we allow the mass piece to fall, and as the mass piece falls, it pulls the tape through the timer. The tape now gives us an accurate record of the mass piece's displacement and the time taken. Mm, correct. But you know what, let's go back to the lab and analyze this information. Okay, sure. Right. Now to help us analyze this detailed information, I want you guys to please cut this tape into 0.1 second interval. How many dots would represent 0.1s on the tape? Remember that the time taken between two dots is 0.02 seconds. So we need five intervals, which are six dots. After Dinawa and Lerato cut the whole tape into 0.1 second time intervals, they measured displacement for each of the time intervals. Next, they pasted the segments next to each other to form a graph. Guys, Aaron, thank you very much for helping out with these experiments. I think it's time for us to go now. I'm going to take the data back to the studio where we're going to do some calculations and see if we can't find a way to describe the motion of falling objects a little bit more accurately. Let's go, guys. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Well, I really enjoyed our trip to the lab, and now we can analyze the data we collected together. Let's get started right away by having a closer look at this graph the learners put together. Notice, each of these segments of the tape represents the displacement of the mass piece in the time interval of 0,1 seconds. What do you think this tells us about displacement of the mass piece during each of the time intervals? Remember, displacement is the change in position. I'm sure you can see that the displacements for each of the time intervals are different. 
There is clearly an increase in each of the displacements for each of these 0,1 second time intervals. So we can say that the velocity of the falling mass piece increased during its fall. In other words, the mass piece is definitely not moving at constant or uniform velocity. But do you think that the velocity is increasing uniformly? I think we need to look at the measurements of displacement our learners made for each time interval. Notice the difference in the displacement between the second time interval and the first time interval is 0,096 meters. And the difference between the second and the third time interval is 0,096 meters. In fact, the displacement for each of the 0,1 second time intervals is increasing by 0,096 meters. Can you calculate the velocity of the mass piece for each time interval? Remember that the velocity of an object is defined as the rate of change of displacement. We find the velocity of an object by using the formula velocity equals change in displacement divided by time. I have filled in the values of velocity for the mass piece into this table. Look, the velocity increased by 0,96 meters per second for each of the time intervals. Can you see that the value of the velocity are increasing uniformly? Can you remember what we call any change in velocity? That's right, acceleration. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So, because the velocity of the mass piece is changing at a uniform rate, we can conclude that the mass piece has a uniform acceleration. I hope you now understand gravity and how to measure the value of g. Try the task on gravity in our task video to check your understanding. The task video and other related videos can be found on the Mindset website at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.